Okay, Carsten. Now to your RDMA test. What a, what a, what are you going to show to us? <laughs> yeah, so What's so special about your tests? Uh, Better than mine. What? What? <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I like to see uh, the full network bandwidth, and uh, okay. to, be, to be honest, we will not see two times 100 gigabits here, uh, because um, the hardware design I have can't deliver. 200 gigabits from the memory don't don't undersell we will we will, <laughs> we, will we will justify you know when when we uh, when we see uh, when we see the real data yeah we will, we will see some okay uh, some but we will data. stress your system right so yeah. that's what i got but if you imagine uh, you have two 25 gigabit uh, network adapters for uh, for your storage traffic or even four 25 gigabit with this test i do you can really get uh, line speed so with two okay 25 network adapt 25 gigabit network adapters you nearly see 50 gigabits and uh, for that we can't use disk speed uh, as example because disk speed is writing to a the storage local, device local yeah? disk maybe a maybe a disk or maybe an yeah. nvme uh, but usually you can't write with 50 gigabit to an nvme you could create a ram disk for that that mm. would be of course very fast but uh, then you have to download some third party software and create a ram disk on your azure stack hdi nodes that you want to use for production wouldn't do that mm. yeah? so i was thinking how could we do that uh, and what is the fastest part in uh, in uh, uh, in a server Usually it's a RAM, so the memory. Right, right. So if we could have something in, in the memory in one node and move it to the memory in the other node, uh, the network usually is our bottleneck. And we have Hyper-V here. We can create a virtual machine mm -hmm. that uh, uses a lot of memory. And we right. can live migrate the VM from one node to another. And if we don't create a disk, and don't install an operating system. We just mm. create a virtual machine with a lot of memory. Mm -hmm. We can live migrate this uh, virtual machine without a central storage that we don't have. We don't have a cluster. We don't. Have we a don't storage. have it. We don't have it yet, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we will, will have it soon. But soon, but and we are only testing the network portion of the storage part. But you know, yeah. we will get to a decent uh, and nice storage performance later on. But we don't have. Uh, we don't have. Don't have the disks yet. Yeah. Okay. Good. So understood. You are using the RAM. Okay. Exactly. So for that, I had to enable the live migration on every node. I okay. Did it with PowerShell here, with enable right. VM migration. Mm -hmm. And then I used the command to set some options. It's set right. VM host. So mm -hmm. we configured five parallel live migrations. We configured two parallel storage migrations. Also, we, we set our virtual machine migration authentication type to CRED SSP. That's mm -hmm. the default one. It's used anyway, but I, I wanted to mm -hmm. mention it here. And mm -hmm. then we use any network for migration too. Okay. So we let Hyper-V decide. But the hypervisor decide which network it will use for the live migration traffic. And uh, it will leverage SMB3. That's the next one. That's a performance option. Okay. And SMB3 uh, leverage RDMA and has a feature called multi-channel. So mm -hmm. it will use multiple adapters if they have the same speed and the same cap capabilities and mm -hmm. it will use the fastest one so that should be our two 100 gigabit rdna enabled adapters okay so um, and then i specified some passes for the virtual machines because the default passes okay. in c program data yada yada, yada. Uh, maybe not the most ideal one so okay. then i have to create a virtual machine mm -hmm. and we do that with powershell Okay. We create it here on the node one. So with new VM, mm -hmm. I always uh, name the VM big VM. So if yeah. I we will see some, probably in a second, right? <laughs> why? Yeah. Why? If why I move this something name? around and one host is yeah. not taking the load, and why is he not? Oh, big VM is still there. It uses a lot of memory. Uh, okay yeah that's so let's do a 400 gigabyte vm that's okay a lot of ram that's a lovely decent vm and no hdd and we do a generation 2 vm yes please so it also works with a generation 1 vm so yeah. we have it now mm -hmm. so if i would turn the vm on 
Mm -hmm. It will not work because okay. well, the data is stored on the C drive. And if you create a VM, we can see it here. We have mm -hmm. a Hyper-V manager here. Here's our big VM. If we yep. look into the settings mm -hmm. of the VM, that's the right one here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we see that the automatic stop action is safe. So when the, the Hyper-V is shut down, it will not shut down immediately. It will try to uh, do the automatic stop action on every VM that is running. And if it's safe, it will save the memory to disk. Mm -hmm. So we have 400 gigabytes of memory, uh, mm -hmm. so we need a lot of space there. So okay. to save this machine, before it starts this machine, it will allocate the memory that is configured on the disk. And our our boot disk is not 400 gigabytes, so it can't do that. We have to change this to turn off. Okay. Yeah, if I mean, it it's... would be uh, an operating system installed, right. shutdown would be better, but there is no operating system installed. Yeah. So turn off is the right. Choice. I was just about to say we don't have an operating system. We don't even have a disk attached to that virtual machine, right? I mean, it's yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. Can you start it then? Uh, what does that look like? Oh, we can start it here. Okay, but before you do, it might be interesting to have a look at Task Manager as well. Well, oh, that's a very good idea. Let's do that. We have Task Manager on the core installation. Okay. Here you see it. We go to performance. All right. You see our memory. Okay. Here's our CPUs. We can even show them. We have a lot of yep. cores and hyper. Uh, uh, logical CPUs, but the memory part is the most interesting one. And mm -hmm. if I now start mm -hmm. the VM, it should allocate. Hopefully, it starts right, um, and then it will. It okay. will. It will. <laughs> so you yeah, see, okay, uh, it started and it allocated 400 gigabytes. Get it. And it it has written a lot of zeros to the memory. Mm -hmm. So we will move hopefully a lot of zeros over rdma okay you could say okay zeros are easily compressed but rdma is not compressing the stuff because our data is not going through the kernel mm -hmm. who could compress it the cpu uh, the network card the rdma card directly gets the data out of the memory and puts it over the network to the other side so we don't use CPU for the mem uh, for the transport of our data. And that's the beauty of RDMA. Mm -hmm. you know? yep. So let's move it. Move it, move it, move it. Move VM, big VM. Mm -hmm. To and your destination to... host, yes. It's acted. So okay. we move it on the second one. OK. So if, if I start let's, now. Let's move and look at the network, what's happening at the network. OK, let's see the network here. Now, as we do have Task Manager open, I mean, that would be in the most obvious place to look also at the network. Yeah, and you see nicely. Uh, <laughs> nicely. Azure Stack HCI is either it's magic. Not moving the data or magically moving the data. Magic. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, magic. <laughs> yeah, we, do, we don't, we see that we see nothing, right? Uh, that's, yeah, let's, okay. let's start the Task Manager on the other system. There we should see the memory allocation. It's here. Okay. There's the memory. But there's right. also no traffic here. And our, how you call this, scroll bar? No. Task, uh, no. Um, the how progress, it's bar. Progress, progress bar. Progress bar, yes. There are some rumors. Microsoft has some problems with the progress bar. But believe me, it's <laughs> running because it's deleted here. <laughs> yeah. And if you look in Hyper-V Manager, it's gone. And mm -hmm. now it's here. Huh? So OK, so it here. moved. It moved the, uh, it moved the virtual machine. Why do we see? Why don't we see any network traffic in Task Manager? Yeah. That's a very good question because the RDMA traffic is not going through the kernel, and Task Manager can only show the traffic that is going through the network uh, layers in the kernel. Mm -hmm. RDMA is not doing that, so you don't see any RDMA traffic here. So if you don't see anything here, mm -hmm. it's a good sign. RDMA, there is RDMA traffic. Okay. If you yeah. see a lot of traffic here, RDMA is not working, and then SMB3 is mm. leveraging SMB3 over TCP/IP, so, and that yeah. is going through the kernel and using a lot of CPU. Huh? 
So if you, yeah, that's that's the thing, right? So if you have a system set up with uh, RDMA um, and you see a lot of traffic on your storage network using on task manager, then something might be wrong, right? Exactly. So how can we see the traffic? We can see it in Perfmon. There are mm -hmm. counters in performance monitor, but unfortunately, Perfmon uses a ZMMC, so it's not running on mm -hmm. an Azure Stack HCI core installation. So I started here on another system. It's just Perfmon here. Yeah. And the standard counters of my system. So I go here to plus. Mm -hmm. And I want to add counters, but not counters of the local computer. This is right. the Pika VAC machine, PowerCourse VAC machine. I want the counters from another, a remote computer from our Azure Stack HCI system. So I enter here the name with backslash, mm -hmm. backslash. And now it loads the counter from the other system. And here we have RDMA activity. And it shows us all RDMA capable network cards. Mm -hmm. And we know that our 100 gigabit cards are Mellanox cards. So we choose all four Mellanox cards and go to OK. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't like the graphs here. I want numbers. I'm a number guy, numbers guy. So, and here we see all our adapters. Okay. And I know that the 100 gigabit adapters are the Connectix 5 EX and the 25 mm -hmm. are this one, but we we let's let see, them yeah. here. Let's let's prove, right? So now our VM is on this node, mm -hmm. right? And we move it back to the first one. Okay. So now so jump. we see here the memory allocation, and now we go to F1. Right. And okay. you see here, mm -hmm. there is our RDMA traffic. Mm -hmm. So we have Usually when I do a course, I do Azure Stack HCI courses, I ask which is the biggest number. And the people, of course, say this one. That's not true. This is the biggest one. Because here is a point mm -hmm. and here is a comma. So this is 8 gigabyte and this is 39 megabyte. Mm -hmm. And that was all the traffic we see. So this was 400 gigabyte of data. We move it again. Okay, now we move yeah. it from one to two. Maybe we should do, you know, some maths. What you know, what that meant. The eight gigabyte meant gigabyte times eight. It's sixty-four gigabit on mm -hmm. this adapter, and right. sixty-four gigabit on this adapter. So we are moving the data. If I get it correctly, eight times yeah. eight is sixty-four, yes. yep. and it's more than eighty-four because we have eight point two here. Uh, we right. are moving with one hundred thirty gigabit, but unfortunately not two hundred. Now we don't get the two hundred. So what do I do? We want to see. Uh, it's so fast. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't have enough memory. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we move it again. So what do I want to see? Usually I would, it's the wrong host. Usually I would love to see line speed. We don't get mm -hmm. it, but with 25 gigabit adapters, you will see three point something, and that would be 24 right. something gigabit. And then I want to see both adapters used. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, the, this is multi-channel and mm -hmm. the numbers should be very similar. So usually yeah. the first three to four digits should be the same. Mm -hmm. 8.3, 8.28, yeah, it's updated every second. So you see here, it's very similar. And now it's done. Yep. So that shows me um, we multi-channel is working very nicely. RDMA is working nicely, and uh, we have the same speed on the same on the both mm -hmm. adapters. If you have different speeds here, so on one adapter maybe 7.9, and then the other 8.3, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is no other traffic here, only our live migration. So it should be equal. We don't have storage traffic here. If you do this test later with a storage basis direct system, so Azure Stack HA with storage basis direct, and there are VMs running, you have some traffic. You don't see maybe equal numbers. Yeah, but now only this traffic is there. Mm -hmm. Let's do it again. Where is the machine? It's here. Yeah, it should be very equal. If it's not, very equal you have something is wrong yeah for example 
firmware issues. You don't have right. the latest firmware driver. You have maybe the, 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 the drivers that were in the operating mm. system. You don't update them to the newest one. Yeah. And uh, did you Problems ever in the switches? Yeah. yeah. And did you ever come across that you know the people were putting the uh, the network card into you know the uh, the PCI bus with the lowest speed? Right. I, I mean, I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I've even seen in my in my training, I, I mm. had a misconfiguration on my Mellanox switches, so the PFC was not enabled on one of the 100 gigabit adapters. Right. What I showed last. So uh, PF, uh, we have to turn on PFC. We right. had different numbers here. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and so if you don't configure your switches, you can maybe, don't yeah. configure them correctly, you can maybe see it here. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, okay. That's a good point. So um, yeah, I like your test. Um, also, it has more visuals than mine, um, which is also good. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit jealous about this one, but. Anyways, yeah, but um, you, uh, you can do it now. You can do it. It's not a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it shows you a bit more, but yeah. of course you have to uh, configure Hyper-V. You have configure have to configure live migration mm. uh, to do that test. But uh, you you leverage, uh, you 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 challenge your network more, right. and then you can maybe see some misconfiguration uh, here in PathMod. Uh, and uh, first. Before you start with cluster, before you start with the storage part, network has to work. Mm -hmm. And if we see multi-channel running fine, and we see the same numbers on say on the both adapters, it doesn't mean that RDMA is configured correctly. Mm. So you can't be sure. But if you see uh, different numbers, you can be sure something is wrong. Mm. Yeah? So it's just to, yeah. you are not completely sure that uh, everything is okay now. We have to do other tests for that also. So maybe folks, you folks out there should uh, run both tests uh, if you want to. Uh, but I think you know um, having a good um, having at least testing be done before you create the cluster is a good one because a lot of people, you know, the projects are being uh, you know get a lot of pressure for getting productive. However, to change things you know with a productive system is much harder than uh, if you experience issues, right? Um, um, so I would advise you to fix the problems before, you know, doing the clustering and putting workload on it. Yeah. In the next video, I will show some extras. If you have a Mellanox installation, so we will talk a bit about additional uh, uh, mm -hmm. Pathmon counters that unfortunately are, no, are only available with Mellanox, and I will show you something else. So we will have okay. another RDMA test video uh, in the next video, but this is only uh, doable with Mellanox counters. Okay, so um, this is for the Metalnox then, um, but you know we continue on with our clustering, I think. Uh, but first of all, we do the cluster validation, as we now have seen that our RDMA is good. Yeah. But that's in another video, right? It is.